It's a Tuesday night FCAC Boys Hoops Clash on the DAF Media Network. Tonight, the Falcons of Fairfield Ludlow High School travel to take on the Darien Blue Wave. Hi, everybody. Join alongside Cam McGraw. I'm Braden Shank. And Cam, Darien is coming off of a crushing defeat at the hands of Trumbull on Friday. And this is a Blue Wave squad that can really use the leap back into the wind column here tonight. Yeah, definitely coming back into this game. You were talking about the loss to Trumbull. Coming back at home, Simeon Dahl coming back. It's, got, it's an important game for Darien here, and they definitely need to show out and get a win today. Now, looking at this Fairfield Ludlow side of things, this is a team that played an overtime thriller against Maloney on Saturday. They came away with the win against the Spartans thanks to 11 points in the overtime period. And Ludlow's a team that they struggled in FCAC play this year, only going 1-3, and three, and they're looking to pull off the upset here against Darien. Yeah, it's really big for Ludlow today. You're talking 1-3 and three in the FCAC and an overtime thriller that they were able to pull across from. So I think coming into today's game, it's, it's big for Ludlow, and we'll see what they got against this Darien team. Up into our pregame show, we're going to start with the uh, players to watch in this one. And for Fairfield Love, though, they have one guy that is a sharp shooter, a driver, and everything in between. That's Tate Mahoney. He had 25 points against the Maloney Spartans. And uh, Cam, what did Tate Mahoney do against Maloney? Yeah, Tate Mahoney against Maloney had a great game. You were saying 25 points, getting a lot of those from the three-point line. We'll see what he could do against Darien. We've seen Darien play some pretty tight defense around the perimeter, but if he could replicate another 25 today, that would be great for the Ludlow Falcons. I mean, not only is that fun to say Mahoney against Maloney, yeah. but he is one talented ball player on the Darien side of things. They have another sharp shooter you got to look out for, and that is the uh, senior guard, Riley Galou. Last year when these teams met, he had the late throws and sent him into overtime, and last week against West Hill and Trumbull Riley was big on the points and assist side of things. He's looking to continue that production into tonight's contest. Yeah, he's a guy that's been able to come in for Darien and just provide a lot of offense. Riley Galoo from the three-point line is money. We've seen him all season come off from the bench, start in the starting lineup, and he's played great for the Darien Blue Wave. We'll see what he could do today. Shooting from the three-point line could be kind of volatile, so we'll see what Galoo could do. And now that we've officially hit the FCAC conference play here, we're now going to take a look at the FCAC standings. Look at that, our graphics coordinator, Liam Tomaszewski, right on cue. But Darien, they sit tied at third, technically in eighth place in the conference. And as for Fairfield Love, though, in uh, 14th place, is, this is a game that Darien's looking to capitalize off of a bottom three team in the conference, Cam. And what does Blue Wave need to do? Yeah, coming into today's game, it's going to have to be done on the offensive end. A, a bit of a lower scoring game against Trumbull, but this is a big one for Ludlow. So I think they're going to come out and play. So we'll see what Darien could do. That's what Darian needs to do. Now the keys to the game in this one for Fairfield Ludlow. The Falcons, what are their keys to the game? Well, for the Ludlow Falcons, I think they just need to create offensive opportunities and stay out of foul trouble is a big part of this Ludlow team and make the easy shots. We talk about that for a lot of teams, but if Ludlow could come into this game and just play to their strengths and have a good, good game from Bahoney, I think they'll be able to come across with a tough victory. And when you have a player like uh, Tate Mahoney out there, it's easy to just get him depth and get points added on. So that's what Fairfield Love, though, has to do in this one. And now on the Darien side of things, what does the Blue Wave need to do? Yeah, I think limit the turnovers as well as be smart with the ball and adapt to Lud Ludlow's aggressive defense. Like I was saying before, Ludlow's going to come into this game, and they really want to win this. They need to win this, obviously, in a lower spot in the conference. So I think Darien needs to be aware of how Ludlow's going to come into this game and play. And again, play to their strengths, play like they have all season. After seeing that game, Darian played against Trumbull. They went down early. Luke, Luca Antonio for the Eagles hit a lot of big threes early, put Darian in the deficit, and they tried to come back, but the turnovers killed the wave, the uh, the errors on the inbounds, the errors on the passing, and that's really what costed Darian that game. So if they can tighten up on those, they're going to give Fairfield Love, though, a run for their money. It's the Falcons in the blue wave on the DAF Media Network. Starting lineups, opening tip, and the anthem coming right up. Fourth, Simeon Dahl. 
as always the rendition of the anthem. And we're just about ready for this Tuesday night battle between the Falcons and the Wave. The Darien student section, not a big crowd, but seven fatefuls making the trip out. Of course, Doug Somerville knows how to rally the troops up, got the Wave going during the anthem, looking to bring a little bit of a home court advantage to this game. And Cam, that was something that hurt Darien on Friday. They went to Trumbull, a sold out student section, a cheerleading squad, a dance squad, a mascot, everything in between. Oh, yeah. How big is a home court advantage, especially in FCX boys you basketball? You know, a lot of people who watch these sports don't really realize how important home field advantage is, especially when you have a sold out stadium of students really coming to rally behind their team. So I think here for Darien, even having the people that they have, it's going to be very important. I was at that game Friday night. It really, it felt like a Division three or Division two atmosphere up at Trumbull High School with the amount of students that showed up for Trumbull High School. And it was a game that Darien, they played well on the court, but when you got to go up against that, it doesn't help your cause has now shifted back to this Darien Ludlow game. We'll see Owen Lay and Jake Hendrickson on the Darien D at center court to get us started on this Tuesday night. The ball is tipped and we are underway. And that one will be grabbed by McMullen. Darien, they're in their home whites. Moving from right to left on your screen. The starting five for Shroy Bentley tonight. Isaac McMullen, Simeon Dahl, Davis Depp, Jack Barber, and Jake Hendrickson. And for the Fairfield Ludlow Falcons, their starting five for head coach John Daly. Squad, Tate Mahoney, Chris Gervasi. Three ball from Depp, no good. Rebound to Barber. He'll dish it out. Davis Depp was looking to get some early points on it. Good rebound by Barber, though. Dole now driving in. Gets a good roll on that one. Darien strikes first. Great drive by Dahl there, and he's going to be an important part of this Darien offense throughout this game. And as I was saying, Fairfield Ludlow, they are in their road blue jerseys with the white numbering, reading Ludlow across the chest, chest moving from left to right on your screen. Three ball there, sent up just off the mark. Ball sent up by Barber. That was Ryan Torello on the three ball. The uh, sophomore point guard. Depp's now going all the way, and he scores. Nice pump fake from Davis Depp, able to take the baseline. He kept his eyes up while he was driving, able to finish up the rim. Darien starting four up now. Here's Mahoney, good bounce pass, finds his way to Gervasi. Fakes it out, gets it now right back to number three, Torello. Chris Gervasi, a senior captain on this Ludlow squad. He had five against the Maloney Spartans on Saturday. Tate Mahoney for three, it's good. We were just talking about Tate Mahoney, and he gets his first points of the night. A yeah. long three ball from Mahoney. A lot of confidence there. Just pull it from way deep from the three-point line. He's able to get it to go. He made all four Fairfield Ludlow's three balls against Maloney. There's Barber down. He can't get that one to go. Rebound this time to Lay. But he's going to be the guy that Ludlow's going to go to when they need the points. Gervasi. Now in the corner, Mahoney again, being guarded by Depp. Medor is getting his first touch. That's Jake Medor, the junior. Torello bounce pass this off, and the layup's good for Owen Lay. A good pass from Gervasi there, bouncing it inside, and Ludlow able to score. Fairfield Ludlow is their first lead of the night. Trying to steal it is Owen Lay. And Darian collision on that, and that's going to go out, so... A turnover on the wave. Not sure who you give that to, McMullen or Dahl, considering they collided on it. Yeah, it looked like McMullen was trying to go around and Dahl tried to get out of his way, and they both just butted heads there. Not what you like to see for Darianne. The ball will go to Fairfield Ludlow now. Now it bounced over to Torello. Now driving his lay. Stopping the corner. Hendrickson's going to guard him. Risky pass intercepted by Barber. He's going to look to flip the court. McMullen gets there with his speed. Three ball there from Depp, no good. That was Hendrickson who fought for it, and Darien's going to keep possession. Good job by Jake Hendrickson to fight to the end there. 5-11 left to play in this opening quarter. Ludlow has scored the last five. McMullen on the inbound now. Over to the big Jack Barber, the Williams football commit. Now Dahl to give and go. The defensive pressure by Gervasi. Dahl dishing out to McMullen for three. It's good. Great pass from Simeon Dahl and Isaac McMullen able to hit it from the corner. A big shot for Darian. The third three ball McMullen's made on the season. He's up over 20 points on the year. There's Gervasi. Jump shot by Mahoney. No good. Rebound to Hendrickson. Now McMullen taking it across the midcourt. Over to Hendrickson. 
And that's going to be a traveling against Jake. Darian, they've kept up with this heavy defensive pressure, and we see it from full court, and then sometimes when they're down, they go to half court, but they continue it in today's game against Ludlow. Both of these teams known to have good defenses. Ludlow known for their John Daly man-to-man -man -man aggressive defense, if you will, something they've run for at least the last couple of years. I remember when these guys were here two years ago and they ran the same defense now that they have here in 2023. There's Jirasi. Jirasi driving now, dishing this one off into the corner. Mahoney for three, just short. Rebound it all. Here's Dahl now, coast to coast, goes up. No good off the backboard, rebound to Barber. He'll try the second chance and get it to go. And the overall size advantage for Jack Barber right now is pretty immense, and he's had a lot of offensive rebounds to start, so we'll see what Ludlow will do to combat that. Wide open is Owen Lay as he will pick up points three and four to his name on the game. Nine to seven, Darian still leads though. Dahl now. Over to McMullen. Both teams readying subs at the scorer's table. Risky pass down low, that will be intercepted by Gervasi. Again, the turnovers for Darian somehow coming to life. In the corner, Medor, right back to Mahoney. Looking for it was Gervasi. He'll retreat it. Makes a nice move. Goes to Dahl's left. Torello driving in. Barber will take the charge. Great play from Jack Barber and great awareness. Able to take it, realize that Gervasi was going to go for that layup. Gets in position, gets the charge. Great job by Jack Barber to take the charge. We'll see our first subs of the night with 3.17 left to play in this opening quarter. For Darian, they'll take out the big men of Barber and Hendrickson, but bring in Galou and Austin Black. As for Fairfield Ludlow, Jake Medor checking out, and his place comes Colin Riley, the senior captain. Pass just high of Black, and that will be turned over to Fairfield Ludlow. Mahoney, pump fake. Now gets it over to Charlie Mahoney. Blocked by Black. McMullen now in the corner for Dole. Three ball, no good. Slowing it down is Fairfield Love, though. That's Torello. Now right back over to Charlie Mahoney, the sophomore brother of Tate Mahoney. Tate Mahoney now. Good defense by Galou. Mahoney to Mahoney. Three ball for Charlie. No good. Rebound to McMullen. Now here's, uh, here's Simeon Dahl in the corner for Galou. The sharp shooting three ball. Just overshoots it. Black hustling for the rebound. He can't get there. We talked about Riley Galou being a spark plug. Kind of off the bench, and he got a good look there. We'll see what he could do coming to the final two minutes in this first quarter. Brenton Dolan's going to check in for Darian, the senior forward, and uh, he's going to look to get some points on the board in the place of Davis Depp. There's Colin Riley getting the touch, the senior. Wore the number one jersey for the Falcons in the football season. Pretty good wide receiver out at uh, for Mitch Ross's Falcons. Foul calls against Austin Black. And it's actually a blocking foul, my apologies, on Brenton Dolan. So he comes in, quickly draws a foul. And luckily for Darian, actually not lucky for Darian, it's going to be Charlie Mahoney going to the line shooting two. First one's a beautiful swish for Mahoney. We talk about free throws a lot. Obviously, in the first quarter, you don't think too much of them. But down the stretch, they are very important, especially in these close games. We look at Darianne when they played West Hill, 37% from the free throw line. They just couldn't ice the game as Mahoney goes to the line and makes both of them, tying us up at nine. But they do make a big difference, Cam McGraw. Oh, yeah. And now Ludlow looks to be applying a similar press to Darianne. Simeon Dahl being guarded by Riley. Here's Dolan now, dishing it off to McMullen for three. No good. Rebound to Mahoney. Mahoney slowing it down. He'll take the jumper. No good. Rebound will be grabbed by McMullen. Now here's Isaac. Dishing it off to Galou. Black down low, playing physical. He'll draw the foul. 
That one called against number five, Colin Riley of Ludlow. So far for Ludlow, it looks like Mahoney has had a similar shooting style throughout this game. He's caught it, dribbled around a lit, and then just kind of stop and shoot. So we'll see what the Ludlow offense will continue doing in the rest of the first quarter. So here's Austin Black shooting the first of his two free throws. Swishes the first. Davis Depp's going to check in for the wave. Second shot for Austin Black. He's now made six free throws on the season. And he makes both of them. So Darian started two for two from the free throw line. Mahoney being guarded by Depp. Gets it across the midcourt. Or the halfway line, rather. Colin Riley. Foul called. It's going to be a push against Black. Not a shooting foul, so. Ludlow won't go to the line. Torello is going to check out. Feewiger is going to come in. Wearing the number 12 jersey, senior captain. He's wearing long sleeves, Cam. Questionable decision there inside this hot gym. Oh, yeah, it gets hot. I come with a jacket. I always take it off like 30 seconds in. But so the senior shooting guard. Let's see uh, if that factors into anything. I doubt it will with his <laughs> abilities out there. Mahoney now to Riley. Riley, and that's going to be a push against Galoo. I mean, if you want to play physical out there, you can't do it right in front of the ref right yeah. there. Especially when Darian's got three referees out here officiating this game tonight. You really can't get away with that type of stuff. Yeah. It's something that Darian wants to try to pull off, but with three referees, it's very difficult to get away with some of those cheeky little pushes behind them. But That's team foul number three against the Wave. Going up blocked, and a foul is going to be called. Dolan questioning it as he thought he got the hands up. Going to the line will be Charlie Mahoney. Yeah, Dolan, he, he came up strong going straight up, but then right when he looks like he fell for the pump fake, his arms came down on the arm. Charlie Mahoney drained both from the charity stripe at his last time, the last trip, rather. He's going to look to make it, or stay with 100%, that is. And he makes the first. A couple substitutions as Jamar Mador will check in for Fairfield Ludlow and Simeon Dahl and Jake Hendri Hendrickson coming in. Second shot, just off the inner rim, gets it to go. Risky pass across the midway line, intercepted by Riley. He's going to look to transition it. Feewiger, now off to Gervasi. Slowing it down is Gervasi. He's got seven to shoot. Dumping it off to Mahoney. Charlie Mahoney back out. The jumper from Riley. No good at the buzzer. And that will do it for the end of the first quarter. 11-11 our score. We're going to step aside on the DAF Media Network. And when we return, second quarter action between the Falcons and the Wave. This broadcast is produced by DAF Media, a joint venture between the Darianne Foundation and the Darianne Athletic Foundation. The production is staffed by student and adult volunteers from the town of Darianne and southwestern Connecticut. Back on the DAF Media Network, taking a look at the series history between Darianne and Fairfield Ludlow. Last year, they played in a thriller, 65-60. The Falcons won it in overtime, thanks to a big effort from Riley Galou. But this is a rivalry that's really been won by Fairfield Ludlow as of late. Since 2004, the Falcons are 15-4 against the Wave, and they went 10-0 over the span of 2007 to 2017. And the fun fact, I had to throw it in, this is the fourth time DAF Media has broadcasted Darianne versus Fairfield Ludlow 
basketball, and it's got a special oh. place in my heart, Cam McGraws. This was the first time we won a National Student Production Award on a game with Darian oh. Fairfield Ludlow. Got to get a shout out to my boys, Ted Brennan, Cam, or Ted Brennan, Trey Cahill, Bo Hancock, the only game he's ever done graphics on, and he won an Emmy on it. <laughs> Probably missing others. I know James Leon, Will, Dan Will Damo on that one. Good crew, and like I said, the first of six student production awards for DAF Media came three years ago on Darian Ludlow yeah. basketball. The more you know. Yeah, definitely. And these two teams never seem to disappoint. Always close. You talked about the overtime thriller last time. So we'll see what we get today. Uh, it's tied at the end of the first. So we'll see what happens in these next three quarters. But now here in the second quarter. Foul will call against Hendrickson. Not going to be happy with that one. But it's a call that the ref give, gives him. That's Darian's fifth foul so far to start this game, so I wonder if they are a bit more leaning on this press, but right now it looks like they're being as aggressive. And for Hendrickson, that will be his first, but you mentioned Darian's fifth foul. That's not something you want to get in, foul trouble early on. Especially when you got a team like Fairfield Bud, though, it's four for four from the charity stripe, mainly due to Charlie Mahoney. There's Charlie Mahoney now, right on cue, driving in, he'll draw the foul on Hendrickson. There you go. That will be Jake's second uh, on the push. And Mahoney, he is four for four from the free throw line with uh, looking to make it more, that is. And five for five for Mahoney. Impressive. And now Tate Mahoney will check back in. Owen Lee also coming back in, the senior yeah, captain. And he misses a free throw, his first of the game. Black on the rebounds. Rare miss from uh, Mahoney. Especially when Charlie went four for seven against Maloney on the free throw line. Kid knows how to shoot free throws. Oh yeah. Braden Shank, Cam McGraw with you. So glad you can be with us on the DAF Media Network on this Tuesday night. Pass there, and that's going to be a turnover. And Riley has had a lot of these striking passes right inside of Jack Barber. And they're very dangerous. Some of them, you know, they look really nice, but that one ends up in a turnover for Darian. I'm starting to think we uh, cursed the player of the game again for Darian. <laughs> we definitely have had a history of that this season, and uh, hopefully we didn't do that to Riley today. But here's Torello driving in. Makes a nice move. Black goes up, and he'll draw the foul. So that's going to be team number six against Darianne. Black's second. Team number seven, rather. That's going to put Ludlow in the bonus. And as you were talking about, foul trouble early is very dangerous, especially with how Ludlow's been shooting. See Coach Bentley talking to the referee on the far sideline. Torello, he went nine for 12 against Maloney from the free throw line. Drains the first. Ludlow's got a two-point lead. Especially when you're big men like Austin Black and Jake Hendrickson getting into foul trouble, it hurts you when you got to rely on Barber to stay in the game when he's also got two fouls against him. Torello doesn't get the lucky bounce on that one. Rebound to Dahl. Here's Simeon Dahl now. Actually, correction, Barber has no fouls. I don't know where I saw two, but it wasn't him. In the corner, Galoo makes a nice move, dumping it off to Barber, and one. And there's, one of, there's one of those passes for Galoo where you don't really know what's going to happen, but ends up being a great pass, good vision, and Jack Barber able to hit the end one. Charlie Mahoney called for the hits, and now Barber will go to complete his old-fashioned three-point play. He does tie us up at 13, though. One shot for Barber. Senior standing tall at 6'5". And he gets the free throw to go. Darian retakes the lead. Good defense be played by McMullen. Torello will spin his way out of it. Tate Mahoney for three. It's good. Great shot from Mahoney. And it's going to be dangerous if he could catch fire in this second half and second quarter. Tate Mahoney the three ball. 
There's Dole handing it off to Barber. He can't get that one to go. Rebound to Mahoney. Winding up for three is Charlie Mahoney. Guess it doesn't run in the family as this one will be missed and going out of play. It's always interesting to see how a pair of brothers or twins play on the court if there's some sort of connection between the two. Well, you got to assume they've been practicing out on the driveway for mm -hmm. however old they are, just practicing those plays. FC Act Championship, game on the line, Charlie yeah. and team. <laughs> but again, now they're focused on Darian Galou. That one, he comes out of nowhere making it. Jumping up, showing off the athleticism is Riley Galou. Fairfield Love, though, shooting 33% from the field, 4 for 12. Mahoney, that one in and out. Here's Galou now. Over to Dahl. Right back to Galou. Five minutes to play before the half. Ball into the ground is Dahl. He'll draw the foul. Putting the body on the line is Simeon Dahl. Yeah, great drive. Looks like he had a person open in the corner, but nonetheless able to draw the foul and get to the line for two. Mahoney called on the blocking foul. And it actually, they didn't call the foul on Simeon Dahl. Rather, they call it on the floor, a blocking foul. Hmm. Interesting call by our officials. Good crew out there today. It did look a little odd that Dahl thought he drew the foul and was a little upset, and that would be why, as he didn't draw the foul, but yet it was a blocking foul on the Falcons for their fourth as a team. Blue right back to Dahl. Depp now, off the glass, no good. Going the other way, gets the layup is Ryan Torello. Coast to coast. Just an easy fast break score for the Falcons. Dahl keeping up with the high pace. We're tied up at 18. Mahoney spinning out of it, passing right back to Colin Riley. Gervais, foul called against Barber. He thought he got the walk on it. Instead, Barber will pick up his first foul, team number eight. They're uh, in the bonus, so one and one coming for Chris Gervasi. Gervasi, the senior shooting guard, went three for four from the, from the free throw line against Maloney. Liam McBride checking in. Battling back from some injuries, it seems some time. Only the fifth game McBride will be playing in this season. Making the first is Gervasi, so he'll shoot the second. Chris, a uh, cross-country runner for the Falcons in the fall. I'll tell you, no, he's got some speed to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> two for two from the line. Here's Galou. Right back over to Dahl. Dahl fakes it out. Now Galou looking to set up the offense. McMullen for three. It's good. And the zone defense has been difficult for Darian, but a good play from McMullen using the pump fake to confuse the defenders and able to shoot the three for Darian. That's a sweet spot over there, the far side and that kind of, so not necessarily the corner, but midway between the corner and the top of the arc, and McMullen is just money from that spot as he drains the three ball for now six points in the game. Going up there and drawing the foul is number three, Ryan Torello. And Ludlow's done a great job so far this game, drawing these fouls. Nine now from Darian. McMullen called for the hits foul. Always wondered what that foul was, hits, but very common call. Torello the first shot. It's good. Referees are going to meet on something. Don't know how serious this is, but 
Ryan Torello will shoot his second shot. And now they're going to go to the scorer's table. One of our officiate or officials out there saw something. And not entirely sure what that was, but we're returning to action. Fairfield Bud, though, they are 9 for 11 from the free throw line. It's always interesting when the referees conference like that. Yeah. That was, that was a long talk, too, and then looks like just gave the one free throw signal. Blocked by number 23, Owen Lay. And Darian trying to get ahead quick, get out fast. Riley Galoo trying to get the left-hand layup, but Ludlow very aware of what was going on, playing some great defense there. Galoo went up. Owen Lay said, not today, and blocked the shot as Sheroy Bentley will come out and take the 32nd timeout for Darian. 22-21, Ludlow leads Darian. And uh, Cam, what's been going right for Fairfield Ludlow so far? Uh, I think one really underestimated part of this game right now is the amount of fouls that Darian has, nine, which is definitely going to hurt them down the stretch. But I think they've played great defense with their zone. Darian still doesn't seem like they've been able to figure it out. We've seen some sparks from Isaac McMullen, but on the offensive side, on the fast break, they've been doing well. I think just like one of our keys to the game was just sticking to the basics. They're doing a great job of that tonight. You look at the personal fouls, two against Austin Black, two against Jake Hendricks, and two against Brenton Dolan. You don't like to see that when you're just in the first half of a young game, especially if you come down the stretch and need fouls from guys. So those three you got to protect, and then you see McMullen, Barber, Galoo all with one apiece. And Fairfield Ludlow, they only have four as a team. Yeah. Which I was going to make the comment in the first quarter. I don't think we saw a, so maybe one foul in the first quarter. Yeah, no, uh, they've been very, very well defended and a very well-coached team, as you can see, the Ludlow. John Daly in his 10th year with this Falcons team as Dahl will go up off the inbound and get it to go. Good assist there from McMullen. But as I was saying, the 10th year head coach, he knows how to coach a basketball team and a pretty good one at that. All staying with the Falcons. And it looked like that one hit off of one of the Falcons' foot. Nonetheless, they will inbound. Plus, when talking about Fairfield Ludlow coaches, you can't forget about their assistant coach, Rob Kinsley, the uh, Darien football coach in the fall. Coaches for Fairfield Ludlow boys basketball <laughs> in, the, uh, in the winter. A jack of all trades. It's an interesting game for him. I want to say he's the head JV coach of Darien football. Could be wrong on that, so don't quote me. But he's definitely on Mike Forge's staff. Here's Tate Mahoney. Mahoney driving. Off the glass, gets it to go. And Mahoney to be that size and to be able to make those moves is very beneficial. And being able to finish with the left, a great play for him. McBride right out to Galoo for three. In and out. Risky Steve. pass there, turned over to Dahl. Lay, bad pass there. Now McMullen for three. That one's good. And Darian, out of this timeout, you could definitely see that Coach Bentley was talking to them about their zone defense. They're taking their time, stepping in these weak points in the zone and passing it out. Good play from Simeon Dahl, passing out to McMullen. Darian, they 25% uh, from the three-point arc, but it's been working for him. McMullen picks up another one. It's just like that, a, they have the lead right back. And Fairfield Ludlow's going to take the timeouts. I think McMullen's having a uh, nice day out there. Nine points all coming from behind the arc. The only Darian player to make a three-point shot mm -hmm. as John Daly will take his first of his five timeouts, a 30-second timeout. And, wow, the uh, tables have really turned, Cam McGraw. Yeah, and I think Bentley with that timeout really came out and he, he said, guys, we got to work on this offense. And they've really done a good job at dissecting this zone defense coming out of that timeout. And Isaac McMullen with the three three-pointers, huge part of this Darian offense tonight. The rest of the team struggling behind the arc, but Isaac McMullen has just been spot on. And you look at his recent games for McMullen, he uh, only two or only five points against Trumbull on Friday, and he is at a very quiet season for Darian. 18 on the year, only two three-pointers entering play, but he has turned it on, leading this Darian team with nine points. Dahl right behind him at eight. 204 left to play in this first half. Teams take back to the court after John Daly's first time out. Braden Shank, Cam McGraw with you on the DAF Media Network. So glad you can be with us wherever you may be. Little inbound play over to Tate Mahoney. Now Gervasi. 
Good defense by McBride, passes it off to Riley. Jumper no good. Colin Riley, the Ludlow soccer star, can't get that one to go, and it's a collision with the ref. I don't think Dahl saw him. <laughs> no, I do not think he did. I wonder if we have a uh, replay of that. <laughs> nope, telling, being told our crew does not have that. Dahl well, almost looked like he was winding up to take three and just kind of bumped into the official. Yeah. I mean, I want to make another reference here that nobody else is going to know. 2018 when these teams play, played as a three ball there from McMullen is gone. There's, McMullen's shot is not good, but with 2018 when they played, an official went down and was hit by a player. Yes, I watched that game. So, <laughs> again, something with Darian Ludlow basketball brings out these uh, oddities. Plus, maybe the fact I should get a life and not watch these games from four <laughs> years ago. But <laughs> nonetheless, 26-24, that was a weird, weird silence there. <laughs> it's always a good matchup between these two. <laughs> here's Fairfield, or here's Darien, Dahl, or Depp now, over to Dahl for three. That one's good. No official on his way, and he drains the three. Good three ball for Dahl, and somebody else on this Darien team is now in the three-point column. Jumper for Mahoney. In and out. Rebound to Dahl. There's Simeon Dahl now. Handed it off to McMullen. 45 seconds to play before the half. Nice spin move by McBride. He'll draw the foul. Push call against number five, Colin Riley. Good play from McBride. Again, getting inside the paint, paint able to dissect that zone defense. Team foul number five against the Falcons. Two sh shooting two will be Liam McBride. Hasn't made a free throw yet this year, but that might change. The Denison football commit. This is the first. One more shot for McBride. And he makes it. 30 to 24, Darian leads. Good to see Liam back out on the hardwood. Especially after he missed so much of the football season. Missed most, most of last year. Only played in nine of the team's 21 games. Blocking foul called against number 23, I believe, Owen Lay. So that's going to go over to Darian. Blocking foul on Lay. Actually, offsetting fouls. As we learned, that's a thing in the Norwalk game. Yeah. And it's a jump ball. That is, can't say I knew that. Offsetting fouls on McBride and Lay will transition the ball to Darian. So I guess the bonuses don't count, and it's a jump ball in yeah. that case. Did you know that? I, I did not. Well, I know the foul was definitely gets laid. Nonetheless, 10 seconds left. Handing it off to Dahl. 30 to 24, our score. Dahl winds up for three. Deflected and good. Simeon Dahl will end the half on a bang, and Darien will head into the locker room up by nine. You take another look at it, was touched on the block, swishes the three, 33-24 at the half. Just a great shot by Simeon, and Cam, what did you see in this first half? Yeah, I think really that timeout that Coach Bentley had, I think midway through the second quarter, coming right out of that, this Darien team has looked a whole lot different. Now up nine, we saw them a lot better on offense. The three-pointers now, two from Simeon Dahl. Offense has looked great, dissecting this zone defense of Ludlow. And on defense, they're just getting back to basics. They've done it all season. They're starting to do it in the end of the second quarter. Now up nine. What a way for Darien to turn it on at the end of that quarter. It was looking close when Ludlow had the lead there, but Darien, they scored the last, try to go back here, would that be last 10 points? 
considering they were down 24-23, then they went on a 10-0 run yeah. to come back and uh, score that. A McMullen three ball, a Dahl three ball, a free throw from McBride, then Simeon Dahl draining the three right before the buzzer. Darianne leads Fairfield Ludlow 33-24 on the DAF Media Network. Don't go anywhere because we still have a second half of basketball to play, and it's going to be interesting. We'll be right back. The Darien Foundation was founded in 1998 by Richard and Maureen Chilton, and the thesis behind that founding was to bring technology to the Darien public school systems. And that launched us, and that got us going, and through technology and capital project initiatives, we've now funded over five and a half million over the last 24 years to build a better Darien. Our board really likes to get involved and assist the partners that we collaborate with, whether it's a grant for a youth project or a grant from a community service, schools, the police, often they come to us with ideas that we help them bring to fruition. The Darien Foundation recently awarded the Darien Police Department two grants. One was for LaserShot and the other for Faro technology. LaserShot technology is based on decision making. It may come down to using their firearm but in reality, we would like them to talk the situation down where you use less lethal force, and this program allows us to do that. Police drop the gun! Ferro technology gives us a 360 degree view, catching all the points we need to catch in our accident scene. It also takes a lot less time. This allows us to open up roads, get traffic flowing a lot quicker than we ever used to be able to. We can also map the inside of buildings, we can use it at outdoor crime scenes, indoor crime scenes. It's really used for a plethora of investigations. It's a tool that most other departments may not have their hands on just yet. And thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have that technology. At Home in Darien is a nonprofit organization that helps senior citizens to remain living independently in their home and in the community. We provide important services to help them do so, such as transportation. Thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have this amazing new van, and we are so excited about it and what it'll do for the community. From all standpoints, this is going to be a real improvement in the services we provide, both in terms of safety and comfort. The Darien Foundation is important to the community in the scope that they reach out to answer needs. Post 53 is the town's ambulance service. We respond to over 1,600 emergency calls a year for a vital service that has been here for 51 years. The technology upgrades provided by the Darien Foundation has been a game changer for us. It's allowed us to improve our training. It has helped us hone our skills. You don't know how important an ambulance is until you actually need it. Thanks to our partnership with the Darien Foundation, who's provided all this technology and several grants throughout the years, we're able to continue to be prepared, to be well-trained and well-staffed, to respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whenever you need it. The Darien Foundation is really excited to be able to launch a new program for the Darien Schools, which will benefit students K through 12 in all seven schools. This is the new robotics program, which will be an extracurricular opportunity for students to build robots, compete against other leagues, and collaborate together. Our robotics program is going to benefit students in so many ways. Regular classes, students are always looking for the right answer, that there's only one way to answer something. Robotics is completely different. In robotics, you learn that there are multiple solutions to every problem. You learn that you have these obstacles that you have to overcome. You have to really be a creative problem solver. And most importantly, you need to persevere. Early on in the process, the Darien Foundation reached out to administration and the offer to provide funding for a project, and it just dovetailed beautifully to the goals of the strategic plan. I look forward to continuing to work closely with the Darien Foundation, both on this project and other projects down the line. We welcome ideas for possible grants. We'd like to do grants that promote and strengthen our community. Sometimes it's from an organization, sometimes it's from our emergency service partners, or it's from the Darien Public Schools. One of our most popular grants, which was the Playground by the Sound, came to us from four Darien moms who said, let's get together and figure out how to build this. 
Thanks to the generosity of our board members and officers, every dollar you give to the Darien Foundation goes directly to the grants that we're supporting. I invite all of you to help us move our community further and support the Darien Foundation. Celebrating and supporting Darien athletes. That is a simple mission of the Darien Athletic Foundation. Broadcasting live from the field, DAF Media covers 125 games a year. All Darien teams, our youth, in our town, on our fields. Fields like the Center Oval and Upper Oval Turfs, the JV Softball Field, and Stadium East, the longest turf in New England, all made possible by the Darien Athletic Foundation and its generous founders and donors. The Darien Athletic Foundation is not just committed to building our town's athletic infrastructure, it's improving the civic infrastructure for everyone to enjoy. The multimedia scoreboard, the snack bar pavilion, and the stadium lights, a $750,000 investment that makes Darien High School just the second school in Connecticut with LED lights. The Darien Athletic Foundation board is made up of local parents parents who know just how quickly it goes by. Its archives of more than 60,000 photos capture those precious moments of our young athletes as they strive to be their very best. The Darien Athletic Foundation has raised almost nine and a half million dollars for our town and its kids, and it's not stopping there, as it continues to build a legacy for our youth as bright as their Great, future, both on and off the field. DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network and want to help us continue to deliver high quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization, and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at dafmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. Back on the DAF Media Network, taking a look at our first half stats in this one between Fairfield, Ludlow, and Darien. Wave controlling a 33-24 to lead over the Falcons. And uh, any stats that stick out to you, Cam McGraw? Well, obviously, we were talking about the fouls, but I think in the end of that second quarter, Darien really limited. I think they had nine and then one more out of that timeout on that uh, double one. And obviously, the three-pointers, 49%. Isaac McMullen's been a big part of that. So we'll see what they could do in the second half. Especially when you make three down the stretch. Simeon Dahl, Dahl, and uh, McMullen making three out of the last ten points in that second quarter. Gave Darian the 10-0 run that propelled them to the 33-24 lead as the team will take back to the court to start in this third quarter. And Cam, what does Fairfield Ludlow need to do to try to make a comeback here? You know, it's it's been a bit slow on the offensive end, but Darian's really playing well on defense, so... We'll see what they do, but I think really on the offense, just become more coordinated and more poised like that. A great pass to get them started. Tay Mahoney puts the Falcons on the board in the second quarter, in the third quarter, second half. Didn't know what I was saying there. We learn as we go. What a good start for Tate Mahoney in this third quarter. An even better dish from Owen Lay. Here's McMullen faking out his defender, leaving it short. Good rebound there by Lay. Here's Mahoney back on the offense. Over to Medor. Right back over to Gervasi. Being knocked down. Torello in the corner. Bang! Ludlow off to a great start. Five points straight off the bat. Less than a minute in. 
33-29, the Falcons are coming right back. Jumper there by Dahl, he can't get it to go. Hendrickson up for the rebound, second chance, no good. Third chance, it's good. Third time's a charm. Good job from Darian on the offensive board, hustling to get there, both Barber and Hendrickson. First you don't succeed, try again, still don't succeed, keep on trying. I guess that's a saying, right? <laughs> no? Go in. Been this season for Darian, Jack Barber and Jake Hendrickson on Owen. the offensive board. Owen Lay gets that one off the glass. Here's McMullen. Simeon Dahl driving. Now to Depp. Depp's got some room. Nice spin move in the paint. Goes up, no good. Here's Mahoney. Dishing it off to Gervasi. Tate Mahoney winds up for the three. No good, just short. Hendrickson on the rebound. Dahl right back out to Hendrickson. Fakes the shot, now drives in. Jumper, no good off the glass. Tipped up in the air, grabbed by Mahoney. Tate Mahoney's now got five rebounds in the game. For three, Torello airballs it. And the Darien student section is going to let him hear it as Madour coming right back firing. And it's a one-point ball game. Coach Bentley is not happy with this Darien squad to start this third quarter. 30-second timeout will be taken by the Wave. We're going to step aside on the DAF Media Network, a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. We'll be right back. Teams drop back out on the court. 5-17 in this third quarter remaining. Fairfield Ludlow having a nice start to the quarter. They have outscored the Wave 10-2 in the second half. And we've seen it a lot from the three-point line. We have indeed, and now McMullen off to Barber. Risky pass. Barber corrals it. Travel called against the Wave. Not the start that Darianne likes to see. Kalu will check back in. They're trying to pull the stat up before. Fairfield Ludlow shooting four from 11 from behind the arc. Sometimes the stats aren't easy to pull up. Yeah. A little delayed on it. Nonetheless, Ludlow's still shooting well from behind the arc. There's Torello into the corner to Gervasi. Going up is Charlie Mahoney for two. That's a, uh, an interesting lineup from Darien here. We rarely see Jack Barber and Austin Black out of the lineup. Jake Hendrickson really the only big center in for Darien. So I wonder what's going to happen on the defensive end. It's an interesting question that Troy Bentley's faced with is they now have a one-point deficit they're up against. There's McMullen. Picked by Hendrickson. Isaac to Galou. Right back to Depp. Galou the floater, no good. Rebound to Mahoney. Fairfield Ludlow looking to keep surging in this one. That's going to be a push against McMullen. Darian's first foul of the second half. And it's kind of like Darian has transformed into the first quarter team that we saw. Struggling on offense, a lot of fouls now coming through. So we'll see what they do in the rest of the, the four minutes left in the uh, third quarter here tonight. And Mal there to lay. Again, Fairfield Ludlow has outscored Darian 12 to two in this second half. Driving, there's Mahoney going up. He gets the good roll. Uh, Dolan looks like he mishandled that one. But a 
attempt there by Torello. Handing it off to Mahoney. Another turnover on the weave. Driving in. That one goes for Gervasi. Darianne right now, not their true selves. Now a five-point deficit. 16 second-half points for Fairfield Love, though. They've outscored Darianne 16 to 2 in this second half. And the tables have turned here inside the DHS main gym. Dahl now winding up for three. Just short rebound to Lay. Darianne starting to missing more shots. Here's Mahoney now. Jirasi right back over to Torello. Wide open is Owen Lay going up. Just lays that one in. I thought he was going to dunk it for a second. Nonetheless, 42-35. Fairfield Ludlow leads. And... Uh, this one-sided affair continues in the second half. Trying to find when Darian last scored here. Uh, it's been a long time. 29 to 35. So the Falcons scored the last three. Or yeah, last. Three. Wow, no, more than three. Wow, my math is still off for any <laughs> new viewers of the channel. But still, this is not good for Darian being yeah. outscored 18 to two in the third quarter. Yeah, and especially coming into this third quarter with I think it was a seven-point lead. Darian played great in the end of that second half. Coming into this third quarter, we thought things would just continue. But now it's flipped on their head. Ludlow now playing great, shooting very well. So we'll see what Darian could do coming out of this timeout. Ludlow has increased their shooting percentage to 52%. Now 83, or 83 on the free throw. Only 36 from behind the three-point arc is what I meant to say. And they've really just been getting the points in the paint. It's been their big differentiating factor. Mahoney, Lay. Uh, Riley, their big scores. Mahoney with 10, Mahoney with 9. So ni 19 from the Mahoney brothers combined. Yeah. Good night in the Mahoney, ha Mahoney household. Nonetheless, Darian needs to start <laughs> stopping them if they want to climb back into this game. Yeah, and I think it, it really starts on offense for Darian. They really get into their groove, and then that leads to the defensive end. They get more physical, but only two points scored, so we'll see what they do. The fouls hurt Darian in the first half, and here in the second half, they're just not playing the defense that they're known to be playing. 232 left in the third quarter. Here's McMullen. Over to Depp. Now to Galou. Galou thought about the three ball. He's going to hand it over to Dolan. Depp now driving. He gets it to go. Good feed from Galou. Good finish from Davis Depp. Torello coming the other way. Hand it off to Mahoney. That one will be called against Austin Black. Actually, Isaac McMullen called on the foul. My apologies. Uh, number three, not 23. Let's well, stay with the Falcons after team foul number two for the wave. Here's Tate Mahoney. In the corner. Three balls good. Charlie Mahoney. As you said, the Mahoney's having a great night right now, especially from the three-point line, shooting very well. They're not playing Maloney, but they're still surging against Darianne. And it's been a, on defense for Ludlow on that last possession. It looked like, or on, on offense, sorry. Darianne was drawing a lot of doubles. Riley Galou running around the three-point arc, looking to double who had the ball. Ludlow just taking their time, finding the open man from the three-point line and able to get it to go. That will call against the Falcons. That will be their first of this third quarter. 140 left in the quarter. McMullen will check out. In his place comes somebody. Risky pass completed by Dahl. By Dahl. Yeah, that one's good for Galou. I don't know what I was saying right there. <laughs> it was Depp that caught it to Galou who drained the three. Not whatever I was trying to say. I know it's been a long day. Midterms for these Darien High School students nearing the end. Assume the same for Fairfield Budlow. Jirasi on the pump fake. Darien section getting into it. Three ball for Tate Mahoney. And he'll take three shots. Foul on Brenton Dolan. 
Dolan's going to exchange some words with the ref. Three shots for Tate Mahoney after Dolan picks up foul number three. And this is a dangerous guy from the free throw line. Three for four against the Maloney Spartans. Tate Mahoney, the team's leading scorer for the Ludlow Falcons. Just so routine, he makes it look. Yeah. He's now got 11 in the game, looking to tie his brother Charlie with 12 points. And he does just that. A lot of these players at the free throw line have a certain routine that they go to. Did you ever have a routine that you went to when you played house I ball do. or whatever? And I still do have one. And I will say from personal experience, it does really help when you get to the line, getting into that certain routine, able to nail all three of those. Dylan Guth will check in in the place of Mahoney, who just drained his third free throw. Guth, a, uh, another soccer player on this Maloney team for Kevin O'Hara's Falcons. Remember, they came to Darien for the FCAC playoffs, fell to the wave in the quarterfinals. Part of Darien's magical soccer run to watch out on that uh, that pitch this uh, this fall. I know we both were a part of that, Cam, and uh, Fairfield Lolo was just one of the stops Darian made. Darian now looking to turn up the intensity. Three ball, no good from, from Depp. He'll get his own rebound and go up to draw the foul. Good job from Depp chasing his own rebound there. Charlie Mahoney picks up foul number three, and Davis Depp will go to the line shooting two. 9.6 points per game on the year. Makes the first one. Free throws have not been a problem for either team tonight. Now Jake Medore will check in in the place of Charlie Mahoney. Mahoney picks up his third foul as head coach is going to pull him. Shot left for Depp. Two for two from the line. And again, they make it look so easy out there. Yeah. As uh, looking at the team stats, Darian, they are 16, or uh, six for seven from the free throw line. Fairfield Ludlow, 13 for 15. So 87% and 86% respectively. Here's now Dylan Guth. Thinking about it was Gervasi. We talk about it every game, but no shot clock. A big part of high school hoops here in Darien. Not yet, that is. Gervasi oh, yeah. for three. It's good. Ryan Gervasi adding three more to his cause, and the Falcons keep on flying. Seven points for Gervasi. And that will take us to the end of three quarters of play. Fairfield Ludlow leads Darien 54 to or 51 and now 44 as you take another look at the Austin Black finish. Again, you could almost dunk it with that height. Good feed from Dahl. And that's where we stand. 30 or 51, 44, our score on the DAF Media Network, the joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. We'll be right back. DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network and want to help us continue to deliver high quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization, and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at DAFmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. Back on the DAF Media Network, taking a look at Darien's upcoming schedule. They have St. Joseph in here Friday night, the silent night game for Darien. So this place is going to be quite quiet for the beginning of the game, and then it's going to go nuts when Darien scores that magical point. And then a road trip's next week at Brian McMahon at Fairfield Ward. 
before they start their big home stretch of the season, Cam. Bridgeport Central, Wilton, Danbury, and New Canaan coming in as Galoo winds up for three. It's good. Austin Kiffin getting in the way on that one, but I assume Galoo made the three on it. Riley Galoo, we're talking about our key player to watch. He's had a couple of threes in today's game. Let's see what he could do in the fourth quarter. I know I'm giving Austin crap for it, but uh, he's one great photographer for this Darien boys basketball team. As Dolan can't grab that one. Ball's coming to Fairfield Buff, though. Troy Bentley yelling at his squad. Checking out will be Riley and Guth. Mahoney checking back in. That's Tate Mahoney. So is Owen Lay. Risky pass there, intercepted by Galoo. Riley Galoo on the fast break, hands it off to Dole. It's good. They make it look so smooth out there as Galoo to Dole for two. Riley Galoo is getting into a good defensive play. He's been turning it into offense all night. And he does pick up a foul here. He's not happy about that one. And Troy Bentley smartly telling Riley, just don't say anything. Go with it, move on. You can't afford any more fouls at this point. That's only Riley's second. Doesn't look like he's happy with the call, but you can't blame him. And now, now to number three, Torello. Medor right back over to Tate Mahoney. Seven minutes left in regulation. Two point ball game. Foul against Blue 35, that's Jake Medor. And I did talk with our scorekeeper, Joe Marzano, at the half. Apparently when the referees talked to the scores table on that free throw, it's because the referees mi mi mismatched the teams. They called a foul on Isaac McMullen, but said Blue 3 instead of White 3, so they were just clearing up that confusion. Mm -hmm. yeah, we got to start miking up the refs at these games. Yeah. You've got to be able to get in the huddle when Joe Marzano asked them the, uh, the big questions. Nonetheless, though, a uh, foul against Jake Medor. That will be his first. Galoo for three. No good. Dolan hustling for the rebound. Dole's going to try. He leaves it short. Dolan again trying to grab the rebound. On the ground, putting the body on the line. Travel call against Dolan. Nonetheless, some good effort from Brenton Dolan there. It looks like he almost got two offensive rebounds at that point in the game. Chris Gervasi going to check back in for Fiewiger. That's going to be a foul. White 10. The foul, that's going to be Brenton's fourth foul. So you got to assume Shroy Bentley's coming, from, coming for him. As this will send big number three, Ryan Torello, to the free throw line. Torello named to the All Fairfield Tournament Holiday Classic team. In the tournament they played up at Fairfield University's Mahoney Arena. Makes the first one, which as funny as it is, I work up at Fairfield University, and I still have not been in that arena, wow. Mahoney Arena. We have Fairfield Love, though, played two nice games in there against Notre Dame Fairfield, and Fairfield Love, though, they lost both of those in the Holiday Classic. I believe it was won by Notre Dame Fairfield. Could be wrong on that, however, as Mahoney drains both, as uh, Torello drains both of them. Galoo now. No good, showing off the fancy moves. Mahoney now off to Charlie Mahoney. Jumper. No good. Rebound to Black. And Darianne doing a good job defensively in this fourth quarter. Just got to get some buckets in on the offensive end. Well, it helps when you don't give up 27 points like the Wave did in the third quarter. And that's going to be a big point of emphasis. You got to assume Sheroy Bentley's looking for is there's the turnover against Depp. But when you look at playing a full 48 minutes, that's not really the definition of it when you give up 27 points in the third mm -hmm. quarter. Yeah. Coach Bentley definitely not happy about that one. And they've done a pretty good job limiting Ludlow in this fourth quarter, but still a little bit under six minutes to play. Tate Mahoney now across the D. Hands this one off to Gervasi. Behind the arc, here's Torello. Right back to Mahoney. Wide open for three. And that is a guy you can't leave open as Mahoney will make you pay. They are a key player to watch. Making a key bucket there for Ludlow. 
16 points for Tate Mahoney. Ballou setting up the offense now. Risky pass there. Black fighting off the defender. Foul will be called. Looks like a mini huddle being gathered on the Darien side with Coach Bentley. Interesting. Right there, they let both teams take the mini timeout on that, considering nobody fouled out. Yeah, we saw that against uh, Norwalk when a player fouled out that they were able to have that huddle. It looked like they're just kind of a almost a mutual agreement between both sides. Well, it is in the rules when a player fouls out, you get 15 seconds to find his replacement as Hendrickson will draw the foul on number 23, Owen Lay. And especially with a guy like Garrett Hickey, head coach in Norwalk, you know he's thinking outside the box with that strategy. And it's interesting if uh, John Daly, Sheroy Bentley are going to do the same. Nonetheless, Jake Hendrickson going to the line shooting two. Jake has made six free throws on the season. And this is the first. And 0 for 2 from the line. Rebound will go to Fairfield Ludlow at number 5. Colin Riley, foul called against Dole, however. And that's a tough foul there, just reaching in. Not one that needed to be done. Now six fouls for Darian in the second half. And Darian, they're inching closer to that bonus as Brenton Dolan's going to check out in his place comes Isaac McMullen. Pass from Riley. Intercepted by Henderson. Rissy pass. Dahl comes away with it. Simeon Dahl driving. Puts it up. No good. <laughs> foul will be called on that one. And again, the foul is coming back to hurt Darian. And Ludlow getting out really fast on these fast breaks. And they're able to draw the foul and get to the free throw line. Depp's first foul, but that will put the Falcons in bonus. Ryan Torello, the sophomore guard to shoot. The game that the Falcons lead by seven, looking to extend that. Torello went nine for 12 from the free throw line, misses the first in the one and one. Forgot that it was a one and one for a second. This rebound grabbed by Dahl. Hendrickson, the big man for three, just off the mark. Rebound grabbed by Hendrickson. He'll draw the foul. And Jake Hendrickson, that's a great heads up play right there. Misses the three. He made a three-pointer earlier this year, but he gets his own rebound and draws the foul. Now for his second trip at the charity strike. Yeah, great awareness, just chasing it down, now drawing the foul, getting the opportunity to go back to the free throw line. And I'm looking over on the Darien sideline, the referee turning away Austin Black. He had the uh, nose plugs in. I guess he had a bloody nose, and referee's not letting him go in with them in as Hendrickson misses the first. Now Austin Black will check in. Oh, he's going to wait. That would have been something, though, playing with the tissues or whatever in the nose. Yeah. Stop the bloody nose. Hendrickson misses the free throw. Rebound, grab, blocked. McMullen's going to take the three. In and out. Timeout taken by John Daly. That's interesting, the amount of pressure that Darian is applying. Are down by seven, but still a lot of time left in this fourth quarter, so an interesting strategy. And Darian, I think the one key takeaway that they need to have down the stretch is to hit these free throws. Haven't been hitting them so far in this fourth quarter, but when we get down to two minutes, they are going to become very important. Hendrickson 0 for 4 from the line, and that's a smart timeout taken by John Daly, especially when you have four timeouts left on your side. You might as well take one with five minutes left to play. So John Daly smartly going to take one there, and there is 3.50 left to play. In regulation, Darian trailing Fairfield Ludlow, 56-49. And the clock is ticking. I'm not sure if Pat knows that. And Pat realized. <laughs> I 
Are they gonna reset it is the question. Yeah, the clock ticked off. Well, the clock did tick, so. Did it tick off from 424? Yeah, I think I think if I remember, there was a decent bit of time. I think somewhere near well, 430. Here's the thing. Liam is Joe, saying 424. Joe Marzano has it in his book when they called the timeout. How Pat let the clock run down a minute and not realize. <laughs> I mean, we love Pat, but it's almost comical that he's saying he didn't let it run. Yeah. So they're going to put time on it. I guess you said Liam had it at 424 as mm -hmm. well? Yeah. So Pat, or Joe Marzano saves the day again at the scorer's table. So is uh, Sean Saylor on the Fairfield Ludlow side. Turned over here is the wave now. Good pick from Simeon Dahl. Three ball for Dahl. No good. Rebound grabbed by Torello. He's going to slow it down. Four minutes to play. Ludlow with the seven point lead. Good defense by McMullen. Gervasi now. Right back over to Tate Mahoney. Good defense by Dahl. Here's McMullen now. Pass to Tate Mahoney, the jumper from the free throw line. No good. McMullen's going to come up for the rebound, but Depp grabs it. A rare miss from Mahoney, and now Darian's going to look to capitalize. Out to McMullen to Depp. Travel called. And that is a costly travel for Darian. With only three minutes, 19 remaining on the clock. Wish he could have that one back. Especially when Depp was not contested. And Darian needs the points as they trail by seven in this fourth quarter. Gets this one off to number five, Riley. Mahoney, risky pass to Gervasi. Slowing it down is Gervasi again. No shot clock in Connecticut High School basketball for this year. Next year that will start when me and you are gone, Cam. Yeah. Long gone. Torello. Right back. Pickpocketed by Galou, and that's staying here. Heads up play by Riley, though. Give him credit for the... Heads, or the, that idea of it will go mm. with it. And all offensive rebounds, that is uh, quite the number. Darian is outnumbered Ludlow 10 to one on the offensive rebounds. Yeah. That's why we got the best stats man in the FCAC, Liam Tomaszewski working tonight on our graphics and stats. Timeout taken by John Daly, right before Depp steals the ball. And John Daly is going to take the full timeout. We're going to step aside on the DAF Media Network and be right back. This broadcast is produced by DAF Media, a joint venture between the Darianne Foundation and the Darianne Athletic Foundation. The production is staffed by student and adult volunteers from the town of Darianne and southwestern Connecticut. Back on the DAF Media Network, Darian Fairfield Ludlow back out on the court. Inbound coming for the Falcons. Pass there to Torello. Risky pass completed. 240 left to play. 
They're in trailing by seven. Braden Shank, Cam McGraw with you. So glad you can be with us on the DAF Media Network out of the Ludlow timeouts. Hands it off to Riley. Right back to Gervasi. I think the strategy right now for Ludlow is to just burn as much clock as you can. Dahl was looking to grab it. No foul called, and that one will be eventually a foul against Dahl. And the ball's coming over here. I wanted the souvenir cab. You gotta drown <laughs> yeah. that. You gotta pick that up and then just bolt out of here. <laughs> Let security track you down. Foul called against Dahl, his first, team number eight. So Mahoney's shooting the one and one. And again, this is a guy you don't want to be putting on the free throw line. Tate Mahoney leads the team with 16 points. He also leads the team with five rebounds. So uh, he makes the first. 57-49. Now going through his pre-shot ritual. As you alluded to, Cam, very important. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's almost like David Ortiz when he steps out of the box, has to go through his whole checklist exactly. of things. Exactly, yeah. Umpires don't like it, but it helps him get in the mindset. He's a Hall of Famer. McMullen looking for someone, finds Galou. A little late on the play, but they still get it off. That one turned over. Here's Riley. That will call against the Wave. A turnover against Darian. That will be their 12th turnover. Darian in this fourth quarter just hasn't been in sync on offense. We saw at the beginning of that play, Isaac McMullen just had to stop there and wait for it looked like a screen. Then he picked the ball up and then turn over on the pick and roll. So only two minutes left. We'll see what they could do. Gallen Riley going to the line shooting the one and one. And Darian, they've only scored five points in this fourth quarter. That combined with the 27 they gave up in the third quarter is not a good trend as he misses it and Black grabs the rebounds. Dull driving, off the glass, no good. Rebound grabbed by Torello. Black knocks it loose. They still gotta get it across midcourt and they will. Foul called against Depp. Ludlow is just playing exactly how they want this game to go. Stopping Darian on offense and just getting the ball down, milking some timeout, and now getting to the free throw line where they've been very good so far this game. The timeout will be called. Minute 40 left to play. Fairfield Ludlow in the double bonus. Roy Bentley is going to take his fourth timeout, the full timeout. We're going to step aside on the DAF Media Network with this, and we'll be right back. DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network and want to help us continue to deliver high quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization, and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at dafmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. You see on your screen, second half points, 34 to 16. Fairfield Ludlow has just outpowered Darianne in the second half. Yeah, an 18 point differential in the second half. It's been huge. Do you know that, Do you know who has 18 points? This guy right here, Tate Mahoney, making 19. He's had a great game and one of our key players to watch. I feel like we've done a good job picking the opposite teams. Yeah. Players to watch, Makai Coleman. Issa, I don't know who we picked for Norwalk, but I think he had a big game. Got to talk to our graphics coordinator about that one, who was also me. <laughs> Missed there by McMullen. Black will go up and draw the foul on Riley. So team foul number six on Fairfield Budlow. And Austin Black will go to the line to shoot two. The big man for Darian, he's made five free throws. Ooh, gets a good bounce on that one. 
10 point love bow lead. And for Austin, five points to his name. Only played nine minutes tonight. Leaves the second one short. Dull hustling for it, punches the rebound out. Depp, no good off the glass. Riley Galou able to get the offensive rebound, get that one. Here's Darianne, they're mounting the comeback here. They got to go quick though. Ludlow's got eight seconds to get it over. They will. Foul will be called. McMullen very close to getting his feet set, just not able to. It will be a block. But the foul is called against Tate Mahoney. Actually, no, foul against Darianne, the blocking foul. Wow. Did not see that coming. So I don't know who they called that on, but that's still keeping in double bonus. First shot made by Torello. So maybe the comeback isn't started yet for Darian. Yeah. Galou's ready in his spot in the corner, looking for a potential pass down low or pass down court. But Torello makes both. And Fairfield Ludlow has not missed really from the free throw line. They are. A good 20 for 24 as Galou winds up for three. No good. Rebound will be grabbed by Riley. And foul called. And usually at some point in this game, we usually talk about how beneficial this Darien press defense has been. But I think Ludlow has done a great job of beating that out tonight. Not many turnovers that they've had on their side of the court. So again, a foul against Darien. This is their 12th of the half. Charlie Mahoney going to the line to shoot two. For Mahoney, he's got five free throws made on the night, make it six. And Fairfield Lobo starting to cruise in this game. Make it two more. 64-52, Ludlow leads Darianne. McMullen to Galoo. Galoo. Right back to McMullen. Here's Depp for three. It's good. And that was a good offensive possession for Darien, but one or two little too late. Still down nine with 47 seconds remaining. And you wonder if that's going to spark something for Darien. 50 seconds or so left on the clock. Timeout taken by Sheroy Benley, his fifth and final timeout. We've trailing by nine, so they need some points, but they need stops, more importantly. You can't really, I mean, you kind of have to keep fouling Fairfield Ludlow. You've got to put them to yeah. the line, even though they don't miss the free throws. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talk about how big free throws have been, and this Fairfield Ludlow team has just done a great job of it throughout the game. I mean, how's this for numbers? 23 for 27 for the line. That's 85% for you math nerds out there. That's, uh, yeah, those are like NBA numbers, and some teams don't even hit that. And you could tell it really is something that is practice, or it is practice at practice. And they've done a great job of that tonight. I mean, Mahoney's made seven. The other Mahoney made seven free throws. Torello has seven free throws made. And then Gervasi has two to his name. So the two Mahoney's and Torello are the guys you don't want to put to the free throw line. But that's mm -hmm. half your lineup if you're Fairfield Love, though. Yeah. So I think they're definitely going to try to get it to one of those guys. And Darian going to try, try to foul someone else. But it's going to be very difficult. So Brenton Nolan and Riley Galoo checking in. We might see the play where Dolan fouls out to get a 15-second timeout for Sheroy Bentley, given that he just used his final timeouts. Although we'll have to wait and see. Inbound. Now over to Tate Mahoney. Mahoney pass. That's going to be a foul against Depp. Fouls keep continuing as this will send Mahoney back to the line. And again, they're going to do the offensive-defensive subs, so Black and Dahl will play on the offensive side of things. Dolan and Galou on the defensive side. The first Mahoney's going to shoot his two shots, guaranteed shots in the double bonus. Oh, a missed free throw. Fair miss. Well, Jim just went silent on that one. So Dolan and McBride check out in the places of Platt and Dahl, and he makes the free throw. Here's Darian now, Galoo, right back over to McMullen for three. 
offense, uh, defensive rebounds. Foul call. Dole thought he had the jump ball. Instead, it's going to be a holding on Dole. It's been a frustrating all frustrating game all night here for Darian, especially with how streaky it's been. Had a great second quarter, then not a good third quarter as we saw, and not a great fourth quarter. So it's a difficult game to come back from. But There's Charlie Mahoney going to the line. Seven free throws made, 14 points to his name. I'll make it 15. I give the Darian student section credit for sticking around, making some mm -hmm. noise. Although they got to get under the hoop, though, try to distract them with mm -hmm. all the signs and stuff. I don't think that's legal in high school yeah. hoops, but <laughs> Mahoney goes two for two from the line. They definitely use some help stopping this Fairfield Bub, though, attack on the free throw line. Here's Dahl. Foul called. That's against number five, Colin Riley. And if that was continue, that is the eighth against Fairfield Ludlow, putting Darianne in the bonus one and one for Simeon Dahl. Dahl, the team's leader in free throws made with 18. 20 points per game, misses the first free throw. Good save by Darianne. Here's Dahl now, second chance, three ball. No good in and out. Refs are going to let him play. However, that ball will go with Darian. So uh, I don't think they're coming back in this one, but they can still put some points up. Dahl for three. Air balls it. Rebound by McMullen in and out. And that's going the other way. A good effort by Darian, but uh, it's not looking too good. Yeah. To say the least. Mm -hmm. And Fairfield Ludlow is going to run off the clock. The Falcons come in to Darien and they soar away with a victory by the final of 67 to 55. And Cam, I don't know what happened to Darien in that second half, but they just fell off. 33 points in the first half was tied heading into the locker mm -hmm. room. And then only 22 points coming out of the halftime yeah. huddle. What happened to Darianne out there? Yeah, I think especially coming end of that second quarter, like you were saying, such a good offensive team we saw from Darianne, able to break down the zone and then on defense get back, play some good defense. And we just didn't see that in the third quarter, almost like a lack of effort. And on offense, we saw less of people pump faking and beating that zone, less people running back on defense. And I think Ludlow really stuck to the basics, one of the keys to the game that we saw and obviously, we've been talking about it all night from the free throw line. They got a lot of their points done there. So I think Darien, we came into this game expecting for this Darien team a big win. Lost to Trumbull, now coming in at home. Big game, a big bounce back win. But they just weren't able to get it done. And Ludlow played a great game today. 67-55, your final from the DHS main gym. And uh, we're not going to take a look at the final stats Oh, never mind. We're not going to take a look at the final <laughs> stats, but we'll still walk you through the final stats in this one. Fairfield Love, though, led by Tate Mahoney. 21 points on the night. Eight free throws made. The guy was unstoppable. Then his younger brother, Charlie, with 16 to his name. And uh, if you're looking for a one-two punch in the FCAC, it doesn't get much better than Tate and Charlie Mahoney. And uh, this is a Fairfield Love, though, team dangerous as they will head in at West Hill, a team that has really struggled this season. Just mm -hmm. lost to Bridgeport last night at West Hill Trumbull. At Staples and St. Joe's, they're upcoming. And for Darianne, they begin really the tough part of their schedule, if you will. St. Joseph comes in on Friday. The Cadets 5-2. and two. They go at McMahon next week. The 7-1 and one Senators at Fairfield Ward. The 4-3 and three Mustangs. And then they start the big four-game home stretch, which coming into the season, Cam, we knew was going to be a deciding factor for Darianne. Mm -hmm. Bridgeport Central, Wilton, undefeated Danbury, rival New Canaan, all home back-to-back-to-back -back -back games. And... Uh, it's really just a behemoth of the schedule for Darian here in the yeah. games, and what does the wave need to change? Yeah, and I think, like I was saying, this game, they came into it, it was going to be a huge bounce-back win, obviously with the loss against Trumbull, and they just weren't able to get it. So I think going into this stretch, it's going to be a lot more difficult than they originally planned it to be. But I think for Darian, they just need to get back to what they were doing. Early on in the season, we saw a great offensive team, well-developed, well you know, well driven with a lot of chemistry. But in this second half of today's game, we just didn't see that. So I think simply just get back to basics. Devastating loss for the Blue Wave as they drop to 5-4 and four on the season, 3-2 and two on the conference. They'll 
set their sights to St. Joseph on Friday. That game will be seen on the DAF Media Network. That's going to do it from us here inside the main gym. I'm going to give one final shout-out to our DAF Media Production crew doing a great job bringing you all the sights and sounds in this one. Whitney Scallon, Alexander Viro, our director, Ben White Shoeless, Connor Russo, and our graphics coordinator, Liam Tomaszewski. For all of them, our advisor, Damian Andrew, Cam McGraw, Join alongside me saying so long from the DHS main gym. I've been Braden Shank, and this has been a production of the DAF Media Network, the joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. We'll see you Friday for Darien Boys Basketball against St. Joseph. And before that, Darien Girls Hockey taking on SWS tomorrow at 4 p.m. I'll be back on the call on that one inside the Darien Ice House. So until next time, so long.